Okay, class. Today, uh, I'll be going to booklet B of P four S A two two zero one four. Well, as usual, please make sure that you are ready with a green pen and make the necessary corrections if you need to. Now, in question thirty one, look at the diagram below and answer the following questions. Identify the functions of part A, B, C, and D by filling in the blanks below. Now, before we begin this question, let us first identify the names of the different parts here that is required in this question. So, part A, we have the mouth. Part B, we have the stomach. Part C, the small intestine. And part D, the large intestine. Okay, so these are the names of the different parts. In part 1, identify where digestion, digestion first takes place. Okay, the answer in this case, as we have talked about in booklet A, is the mouth. So A should be the answer, mouth. Part 2, water is being removed from undigested food. Now, this should be part D. I don't think we need to further explain that because I've explained that before already in booklet A. For part B, what is the name of part Y? Now, we should be very clear about the different parts of a plant. Now, in here, only Y is being asked for. We should know that Y is actually the root. So in this case, let's fill it in here first root and then on top of that let's go through and do some more revision even though the question didn't ask for this this should be the stem the leaves and the flower okay so what is part y part y is the root of the plant okay moving on to question 32 study the life cycle of a grasshopper as shown below so we should be able to tell straight away that uh, for a grasshopper, we know it's a three-stage life cycle. And um, the characteristic part about the life cycle of a grasshopper is that it has got a young that is called the neem stage. So as you from this picture, you should be able to tell that the diagram here that's drawn is the adult stage of the grasshopper because it has got um, wings here. Okay. So, before the grasshopper adult stage, you should have a stage, the young stage, the young of the adult stage is um, the nymph. It looks very similar to the grasshopper except that it doesn't have the wing. But, do know, it looks, okay, or I should use the word resembles the adult Okay, now before the neem stage, we should have the egg stage. So, st stage P should be the egg. So, to fill it in, what, what are this? Um, the egg stage. And in stage Q, we have the neem stage. So, in part B, we move on. The diagram below shows a box with three parts. And um, these are the three different parts here. Um, the first part here with the grass, the wheat, and the worms. Now each part is given different types of food. Twelve grasshoppers were placed in the box above, and the table below shows the number of grasshoppers in different parts after two hours. So there were twelve grasshoppers, and we want to see how they actually move around this um, box so at the end of 2 hours, you can see that um, most of the grasshopper, okay, most of them, 7 out of 12, is uh, in this section here, whereas 4 are found around the wheat and 1 around the worm. Now circle the, circle the food that the grasshopper likes best. Okay, since we can tell that they are the, you have the most number of grasshopper around the, the grass, section of the box, we can say that the food that grasshopper likes most should be the grass since they are all there and probably feeding on it. 
Part 2, other than food, what is necessary or needed for a grasshopper to stay alive? Now, this question here asking for what does the grasshopper need to stay alive? So, for anything, or for any living thing to stay alive, remember, to stay alive, to survive, we need three things. They are, number one, air, number two, food, number three, water, right? A-F-W, A-F-W, air, food and water. Since food has already been given there, so what is needed for a grasshopper to stay alive, you need to say the other two things, okay? But since the question is looking for is here, you may only need one, all right? So looking at the tense of the question, so if you are giving me air, okay, you will get the full mark, or you can write water, okay? Food cannot be repeated again. So one mark each, or rather, if you will get any of them correct, either air or water, you will get one mark. Question 32. Does Dina place or planted a seed and recorded its growth from a seed to a young plant? Okay, a young plant is also called a seedling. So young plant is also called a seedling. Eh? Do remember that. So the life cycle is that um, it starts from a seed, then to the seedling, or sometimes we call it a young plant. Okay, then to the adult plant. Then the adult, adult plant will bear flowers and fruits that will give the seeds. Okay, so this is the life cycle of a plant, tree stage. Now, the seedling was given the suitable conditions given for needed for germination. Now, just now, in the previous question, we talked about uh, conditions required for any living thing to survive. But this is germination. Germination is the process in which the seed develops into a young plant. So this is germination. And the conditions required is very similar to what any living thing requires to survive, the AFW that we talked about earlier. So uh, the only difference being that it doesn't require food. So the conditions required here is number one, air. Okay. Two, it doesn't require food. So instead of saying food, we will have warmth okay, for germination. And number three, we also need water. So you need A, W, W in this case, yeah, instead of A, F, W. Instead of food, we need the warmth. Now where is the plant going to get the food from? It is going, it's going to get it from the seed leaves. So I'm going to write it here, seed leaves. Okay? Okay, moving on, the question says, the mass of the seed leaves and shoots were recorded below in the table. And now before going into this, do note that what is being recorded, the mass and the unit given is in grams. So there are two plants, plant X and plant Y, and what happens to the mass as, it, as you go on from day 1 all the way to day 7. Now, as we mentioned earlier on, now as I mentioned earlier on, the seed lease is where the food is being stored before the plant is able to make its own food. Huh? Okay, now to help you revise quickly, now this is how the life cycle of the of a plant may look like. Now beginning with the germination, as you can see here, okay, the first part that actually comes out from the seed, that breaks off from the seed, after the seed coat is being broken, so the seed coat is there to protect the seed, huh? so the outer layer here is called the seed coat, now, when the seed coat is broken, you will first have the root, right? So, this is the first step of germination. And next, you will see the shoot developing. So, here you have the shoot, okay? And now, what is the seed leaf? The seed leaf is not the seed coat. The seed leaf is found within the seed itself. Um, covered by the seed coat, and this is the seed leaf. Okay, so what happens after that is that um, 
the food the before the plant can properly photo uh, make food rather make food um, the food is being drawn off from the seed leaf and the mass of the seed leaf because the food is being taken away from it the seed leaf should actually become lighter and lighter the mass will decrease so uh, this is what you see here the seed leaf actually uh, shrivels up a bit okay the seed leaf shrivels uh, let me rewrite this. Okay, it should be plural. So please change this as well. Okay, so now this is what we call the true leaf. This is what we call the true leaf. Or sometimes we also call it the foliage leaf. Okay. These leaves, unlike the seed leaf, is able to make food. Okay. They are green. Okay, and has got a substance called chlorophyll. Whereas the seed leaf does not have chlorophyll. Okay. Now, so coming back to our question, uh, look at the two parts here, parts X and part Y. Part Y, sorry. Now, you see that part X has a decrease in mass as we go by, as the days go by, right? And in part Y, you will see an increase. So, in part Y, you will see increase. I will draw an arrow here to show going up. And for part Y, we have a decrease. So, question A is asking, is part X or Y more likely to be a seed leaf of a plant? So, which is which of it? As I've said earlier on, the seed leaf has got its mass decrease because the food is being drawn from it. So, the part X is most likely to be the seed leaves. Explain your answer. You only have to say, now explain. You need to say that, use the information given there. Alright? So, they ask you to explain. So, you use, number one, use information given in the table. Very important. So, now, you see that um, there is a decreasing trend as we as we as we move along from day one to day seven so do remember to explain and show this in your answer so why because the mass of part x decreases while mass of part y increases so this shows you that there are comparisons i make use of the comparison to help me derive my answer in part a so this is the reason why comparison is important you always need to compare so this statement here i have done comparison okay but is this enough i do not, do not think so so you need to go on and say that now since food is being used up in the seed leaf during germination its mass should decrease okay so this will be the perfect answer number one we first state our observation so in this statement here we stated our observation from the table and next we explain our observation okay so the first part here I will give you a half mark and if you get the second part you want to get another half mark so to get the full mark here, you need to have these two points. Okay, question 34. Now look at the flowchart carefully. Now we start off from the group animals, and then we answer the first question that's being asked for here. Does it have wings? So wings, the first thing that should come to mind is that there are two groups under animals that have got wings. So two groups of animals have got wings. One of them is... Um, Insects, 
and also we have birds okay so these two so if they do have wing okay it should be either these two all right so what are the other kinds of um, animals that do not have wings you can say there are mammals okay um fish reptiles and amphibians so these are the likely groups of animals that might come under no all right now if you go on with this direction here does it have six legs now six legs is asking for whether is it an insect or not so if it's yes it is an insect if it's a no it should be a bird so for part a based on the flow chart fill in the blanks with letters q r and p so for b we know that it's an insect so it is most likely a insect eh? so it must be p according to what we have worked out earlier on a duck is a bird huh? duck is a bird so in this case it is, has to be it has to be r and for a shark it is a fish so it should fall under q part b based on the classification chart above which animal does p belong to which animal group sorry which animal group does p belong to and give it a reason for your answer so we have mentioned that uh, we have looked out that P has to be an insect. So we will just write the word insect. Okay. Or you can write the group. Or you write this way. The group insect. Alright. So this is also possible. Now this is the first part. If you get this correct, you will get half the mark. Okay. So half the mark here. Next part of the question, give a reason for your answer. Give a reason for your answer. Now, why is it an insect? Because, very clearly, you can say the two things that we, we talked about earlier on in the questions here. There are two things that we talked about. This is, it has wings and it has got six legs. So, we don't have to say this in our answer using the flow chart. So, it has wings and you must say and it has six legs okay and that's why you can classify under the animal group of insect question 35 look at the following pictures carefully so you have this uh, grandmother looking figure here looking at a food processor or a blender this should be a blender you would have seen this in your household kitchen or sometimes at the hawker center okay so question a why does the toothless old woman have to blend her food using the blender before eating it okay let's do a quick revision first before we move on to the question here the question earlier on was talking about this old woman without a teeth without much teeth right so we need to look clearly at what are, what are the functions of the teeth right so the teeth as we have here the teeth chews food into smaller pieces huh? and it helps to increase the surface area so that the digest digestive juices can act on it now the word here is it smaller pieces that you must take note of huh? smaller pieces now in digestion we have a part to say that um, the first part of digestion is to break down into p smaller pieces. Break down into smaller pieces. Into smaller pieces. Okay? So this is what the teeth do when you chew on the food. Now in the saliva, you have this thing called breaking down food into simpler substance. Huh? So please do not confuse the the, the, the two thing here so break down into simpler substance let me write this down first break down into simpler substances okay 
This is not the same. Huh? Smaller pieces of food and smaller and simpler substance are different. Okay, so coming back to part A, um, how can we answer this question? question here? We can say that um, since the woman is toothless, blending her food allows the food to be broken down to smaller smaller pieces okay please do not write simpler substance huh? it is different breaking down to simpler substance requires the action of digestive juices such as the saliva so the teeth only breaks it down to simpler sub sorry smaller pieces to ensure that the surface area is higher for better digestion by the digestive juices. Okay? So, so as, you can go on to say that, so as to increase the surface area for digestion. Okay. Part B, what is the substance in the mouth that helps to digest her food? So obviously we just mentioned the digestive juice that is found okay, in the mouth is called saliva. So if you say digestive juice here, you will only get half a mark huh? because you're not specific enough. Okay, there are various kind of digestive juices. Um, there are those that found in the mouth, which is the saliva. We also have that that is being found in the stomach and the intestines, and they are slightly different from each other. So you need to be clear here that we are talking about the saliva that is found in the mouth. Okay. Now after one, af an hour after the old woman ate her food, she did not feel well and vomited. So. Which part of her digestive system is probably not functioning properly? Okay, for this question, the answer has to be the stomach. Okay, it is not likely to be the intestine because um, the food usually stays about two hours or more in the stomach before all of it going to the intestine. And usually vomiting is being induced by problems in the stomach and not in the intestines. Alright, so answer is stomach. Okay, okay, moving on to question 36. Look at the table below and classify the following things into matter and non-matter. So, matter again is anything that has got mass okay, and occupy space or we can say it has volume okay so we should be clear about what are matter non matter we have gone through that before glue yes it's a matter air also a matter okay non matter shadow part b the diagram below shows a jar of juice so identify the state of matter. Okay, the keyword here that came out here is state of matter. So when a state of matter is being asked for, you can only say a few things. Whether is it solid, liquid, or gas. These are the three states of matter. Okay, that is a small spelling error here. Okay, so the three states of matter is solid, liquid, and gas. Now, the lead, okay, which is the part here, Obviously, it is the solid state, right? So it has got a, it has a definite volume and a definite shape. And juice is the liquid, okay? Because it has definite volume but indefinite 
shape. All right, question 36. Darius place a magnet near an iron rod. So before we go on to the question, you should notif know that an iron rod here is a magnetic material. Okay. So it means that there will be a there will be an attraction force of attraction here. All right. So he observed that the iron rod moved towards the magnet. His observation shows that the magnet exerts a I would write force of attraction or we can say attractive force. Now the word force is not really in the P4 syllabus. So if you were to write um attraction, okay, I will also give you the mark. Because the word exerts here usually require you to come up with the word force after it. So exerts a force of attraction. As an attractive force, alright, if you're the right attraction, that will also be okay. Part 2. Choose the correct word from the box to answer the question. Now, based on his observation, he can conclude that, that an iron is a magnetic material. Okay. Now, why? Because based on the observation, uh, so what you see here, okay, so... Yes, it is true that it is the, the iron rod is strong, it is hard, but the observation shows that it is a magnetic material. Part B, Darius then set up a similar experiment by placing a magnet near object P. So when a magnet was placed near to object P, he observed that P moved away from the magnet. So what could P be? Now the keyword here is moved away. So move away means there is a force of repulsion okay so for repulsion to occur it must be, be um it must be between a magnet and a magnet all right two magnets so this two must be a magnet so magnet object p must also be a magnet so based on this observation what could p be a magnet okay question 38 Ling Ling shone a torch on a cone and sh a shadow is formed as shown. Alright, so this is the light source or the source of light, the torch, and this is the screen, and you have the object, a cone. So light travels in a straight line, so we you expect that um, you have a straight line here that goes all the way up. And similarly, yes. So we will form, so it gets blocked here. So all the other light rays here gets blocked and doesn't pass through it. Okay. Now we also must assume that some one thing and that a cone is made up of a material that is opaque. I think it's not being mentioned by the question here. Okay. So it does not allow light to pass through. Huh? So obviously this cone cannot be made of glass. So a shadow is formed when light is, one word only, you can write completely or partially blocked. So partially or completely blocked. Okay. Now, of course, if you have already written the word blocked, you're still okay. So you, I'll, get a, I'll give you a full mark once I see the word blocked here. Part B, draw a shadow, draw the shadow that is formed on the screen. Now this is a cone, so what you expect on the screen is actually a triangle. Okay. So if you're able to give me this shape here, it, you're okay. It is better that you shade it as well because usually we use we show that shadows is a darker part, alright? So it's always a dark portion on the screen. So try to shade it. Yep, that will give you a full mark. If you do not shade the check though, I may have to cut half a mark from you. Alright, so half mark for the triangle, the shade, half mark for the shading. Alright? Okay, question 39. Nathan observed the following shadow being formed when he shone a torch onto a ball. Alright, a ball is spherical. Okay, it's spherical. You expect the two-dimensional 
image in this case, or, or rather the shadow in this case, um, would be uh, circular. So this is a circle. So a shadow cast on it, circle. Now he moved the ball nearer to the torch. Now if... So here I have a picture of how shadows is being formed. Alright, so you realize that um, when the teddy bear or the soft toy is actually close to the light source here, you have a big shadow. And when the, bo the, the soft toy is being brought away from the light source, the shadow becomes smaller. Yes? So if we were to apply the same concept here, what, will we see, what, what should we say about question A? We can observe that the shadow actually becomes bigger. Right? Part B suggests one way he can make one way he can make the shadow on the screen smaller. Right? So since moving in the previous question, moving the ball nearer to the torch makes it bigger. So the the way to make it the shadow smaller in this case is to possibly move the ball right further from the torch. All right. Alternatively, you can say you can bring the screen. nearer or you can also say you bring the torch further from the ball so three possible answers that I can accept here each also each one mark okay each is worth one mark either any of these you will get a mark one mark question 40 June Prepared three similar setups that are shown. Three similar setups here. Alright. And each flask was sealed with a tube that contained a drop of ink at the same level. Okay, the diagram below shows one setup of her experiment. So one setup here, one drop of ink, and it's sealed here. So the only way for gas in the in, in the flask, or rather air in the flask to move has to be through the tube. No way it can leave the the flask without going through the tube. So June placed three setups there at different temperatures. Huh? So A, B, and C. Now after 10 minutes, she observed that the ink has moved up in all three setup. Moved up huh? in all three setup. That means all went up. Now explain why the ink moved up. Okay, first. We have talked we have mentioned this many times. Although you don't see anything in the flask, the flask contains air. Okay? So for the ink drop to move up, it means that the air within the flask have expanded. Alright? So the volume has increased. Increased. And that's why the ink drop has to move up. Okay? So Answer is why the ink moved up. It was asked. You can say the volume of air has increased or air has expanded in the flask. Right, causing it to take up more space. Okay. Part B from her observation above, which setup has the water with the highest temperature? Okay, so the one with the higher temperature means that the one that moved up the most. So if you take a look at the different levels here, the one that moved up the most has to be C. Yes? So answer is C. Okay. 
Okay, next part. Without removing the tube, the stopper and the tube, what can she do to set up B if she wants the ink to move down? Now, to move down means that there's going to be contraction of the air. So we can place... Instead, so in these setups here, um, the setups are all placed in hot water. Yes? All in hot waters. In hot water. So what we can do here is to place the setup in basin of cold water that would do all right no need for explanation because they did not ask you for explanation so just tell them what to do all right so the instruction is to ask you what to do you tell them what to do there's no need for explanation question Question 41. Mina wanted to find out which material absorbs the most amount of heat. So the aim of the experiment here is given already, clearly. Material that absorbs the most amount of water. Okay, So she dipped four materials into a basin of water and measured the mass after that, I believe. So before and after. And the result is shown below. So all the experiment has a starting mass of 40 okay and then you see what happens after water has been soaked up or absorbed by the material after that so what which material should she use to clean up a puddle of water you would want the material to be able to soak up as much water as possible so i would say in this case the one that soaked up the most is the one that increased the most Right, so if you look at all these things here, the ones that absorb the most has to be F, right? So material F. Okay, give a reason for your answer. Okay, when they ask you to give a reason here, you must use the information from the table. So if you do not use the information here to explain, you will not get the full mark. So how do we do that? We say, number one, we can say that um, it absorbed the most water compared to the rest right so here we say that it absorbed the most water because it has the highest amount of water as you can see here compared to the rest all right so you can just write that down for your answer okay so this is the answer okay moving on to part c besides the mass of the material name another variable now they're asking for you for another variable eh? so the keyword here is variable Name another variable. The variable that was mentioned earlier on is the mass of a material. So this, this was the variable that was uh, kept constant. Right? The mass of the material was kept constant here. You can see it here. All of it was at 40. Yes? What must she keep constant in the experiment? Okay, there are many possible answers um, that comes to mind. So you can say the... Number one, the amount of water in the basin. Okay? Because if you were to give different amount of water, different um, the, the sponge may, may absorb water differently, right? So if you start off with very little water in the basin, the sponge may not have enough water to absorb, right? So your answer will then be different. So the amount of water is one. You can also say the shape of the sponge because it's possible that some shapes can have better, su more surface area for the absorption to take place. So, shape of the sponge is also possible. You can also say the temperature of the water.
Okay, there are many other possible answers. Uh, if you find, if you think, if if you think that you have an answer that's acceptable, you may come to me. But there's one answer that, one uh, possible mistake that some of you may make here, and you tell me the material, the type of material. If you were to write the type of material, okay, then the answer is a definite wrong. All right. Because if you look in the question earlier on, the aim of the experiment, okay, the aim of the experiment here is to find out which material, correct? So if you were to keep the material constant, you are not able to test anything. You're using the same material. So please be careful if you have used this, it is definitely wrong, all right? Question 42. Now, Bala wanted to make an object into a temporary magnet. He prepared the following items as shown below. Okay, so this is the setup here. We have seen this before, I think, in the in paper paper and um, booklet A as well. So this is the setup here. We have a battery, you have a coil. Okay. So name the material that object X can be made from. So in this case, for it to be turned into object X to be turned into a temporary magnet, this must be a magnetic material. However, if you were to write this as the answer in A, then you only get half the mark, okay? The question asks for the material. It did not say the type of material. So you need to name exactly what it could be. So there are two kinds of magnetic material here that we know. Still, we have iron. Okay, so some of you, you might know cobalt or nickel. These are also acceptable, but I prefer that you choose either iron or steel. So iron or all right here. Part B suggests two ways to increase the strength of the temporary magnet. So there are a few ways, all right? So the one way that you must know is um K is by increasing the number of battery to Increasing the number of turns in the wire coil. Now for additional information, if you were to wind, uh, a possible third answer that you can have is to uh, use a coil that's wind tightly around the coil. So example that I want to show you here is that um, it's not in syllabus, but I think it's good to know. Now, if you have a coil that is um, like this, I have a rod here, and I want to spin the coil around it to form a big one, okay? It will not be as good or as strong as another one where I tie the coil around very tightly. Okay, they may have the same number of coil. I have not shown this properly here. Now, putting the coil tightly around the coil, put uh, uh, around the iron core, the iron uh, rod can also increase the strength. So if you have that as well, I can mark you correct, but uh, you are not expected to know. Okay, part C, Bala tried to use his temporary magnet to attract some plastic sheets, but he was unable to do so. Okay, this is really simple. I'm not going to go into it. The keyword here is plastic sheets. Okay, plastic sheets are non magnetic material. And cannot be attracted by a Okay, question 43. Mrs. Heng was rushing off to work and she wanted to cool the cup of hot Milo before she could drink it. So she placed the cup into a basin. Now this basin should have a cold water, obviously. Now, option A. What temperature of the water should she use to cool down the Milo in the shortest period of time? So first, we already know that heat transfer must occur from this for the cup of hot Milo to the water in the basin for this to cool down fast, all right? This is 
going to happen much faster than if you were to put the cup right in on a table because surrounding it in this case is air right although you don't see it but we know that air is a poor conductor of heat so putting it into a basin of water is going to serve a better it will give you a better cooling okay so heat transfer is going to be faster here in water compared to air so how to make sure that the heat transfer is the fastest we ensure that the temperature difference between the cup or milo and the water the cup temperature difference between the cup and the water is the greatest possible all right so the temperature of the water should in this case be the, as low as possible and therefore answer in this case has to be 20 degrees okay i've just explained the answer for b actually so for part b explain your choice in a okay so i would say for heat transfer to occur or to happen the fastest or at the fastest rate the temperature difference between the milo and water should be the greatest all right so this will give you the full mark sometimes you may tell me that um you need to if you were just to tell me if you tell me only um the temperature is the lowest then you are i will not give you any mark all right so answers such as temperature is lowest then you are not explaining you have already given me the option in th the answer here you have shown that it is the lowest but if you're going to repeat this again without an explanation about heat transfer then your answer is not explaining the uh, the, the concept here so you're not really answering the question you will not get any mark at all all right now c if Mrs. Heng placed a cup of hot Milo and basin on the table for half a day, what will happen to the temperature of the hot Milo and the water? Now, for half a day, uh, keyword here, for half a day, it was placed in the room, alright, on the table. So you expect the temperature of both to reach room temperature okay half a day is long enough for the whole uh, both of them to actually cool down to to or rather to reach room temperature so in one case the milo is going to cool because it's the hot one and the basin of water if it's at 20 is probably going to increase because room temperature as i said is usually i emphasize the word usually about 25 to 30 depending on the question but here the question doesn't tell you that all right so okay the last question question 44 some ice cubes were added into two beakers of water at 65 degrees celsius as shown in the diagram below so if we examine the diagrams very closely we can observe that the temperature of both beakers are indeed at 65 degrees. However, um, the volume the volume is different. One is at 500 and the other is at 200. And the other difference... Yep, I think that's the only difference, yeah? Um, another thing that you must take note is that um, both of them have the same number of ice cubes. So... In here, we have three ice cubes, three ice cubes. So that is to ensure that it's a fair comparison. Eh? So question A. It says that ice cubes in both because change into water. So changing in water here actually means melting, right? Melting. 
after 15 minutes. Now I'll explain why this happened. Why is it that after 15 minutes, both of all the ice cubes changed into water? Now the explanation for this is very, uh, we have to go back down to the first principles. First, melting occurs when there is a temperature difference, right? When there is a heat transfer. So ice cubes is being held at 0 degrees Celsius. That is the melting point of ice or water. So since the water is 65 degrees, it is at a higher temperature than the ice cubes. So we can draw the arrow here for the direction of heat transfer. The direction of heat transfer in this case is from the 65 degree water to the ice cube. Okay, so due to this temperature difference, there is a heat transfer. And the, and the heat transfer actually leads to the melting of the ice cube, one of the effects of heat transfer. So the way to answer this question is, there is a temperature difference between the water bracket at higher temperature and the ice cubes okay so heat transfer from water to ice cube Causes ice to gain heat and melt. So how will I divide the marks here? Well, if you're given the first part here, there is a temperature. There is a temperature difference. Okay, I will award you the first. mark one mark and then if you are able to go on and explain that there is heat transfer leading to gain here right i will give you you will get the other one mark so next part part b in which beaker will the ice cube melt completely first Okay, the answer for this is pretty uh, straightforward. It should be beaker S. Now, how do we, how do we explain um, the answer in, in part B? Okay, so uh, you can observe clearly that uh, in beaker S, there is more water. Now, if you're only going to tell me that it's, gonna, it's because beaker S has got more water, then you are not really explaining or adding value to the answer because everyone should be able to tell me that beaker s has got more water but so you in order to explain here the keyword here is explain you need to tell the examiner or the person who is marking your paper that there is something there that they do not know and you you need to you, you need to actually explain that point so the first thing you need you need to observe and tell is that um beaker s contains more water all right now because of this its temperature as ice melts will always be higher than that of bigger T.
Okay, so having a temperature higher than T consistently all the ice should melt first so the general idea for the uh, for the whole concept is such that now because these two beakers have different amount of water all right so in here you have more water as heat is being transferred transferred from the water to the ice cube right this temperature of the beaker s the wa the water in beaker s is always higher than that in beaker t so having a higher temperature allows a faster heat transfer actually right the the, the bigger the temperature difference between the water and ice the faster the rate of heat transfer. So having a faster rate of heat transfer being maintained, um, you can expect that the ice will actually melt first because it will have a higher rate of heat transfer. Okay, I hope you understand this concept. If you have any problem, please come and look for me. I can explain to you again. Right? So that comes, that actually, uh, with that we come to the end of this booklet B. Um, please make sure that your corrections are done if you need to annotate any additional notes that I have, I have shared with you in this video so that you can revise again during, before the examination, please do so, alright? Right, thank you for your attention. I will see you again soon.